<laughs> and I'm just so looking forward to being able to showcase you. We get to tell me? people about you. Well, oh, and, me. and a little me. And a little oh, me, too. Oh, a little me. By... I mean, it's just, it's. Again. Oh, Why okay. We All always right. Let's do this. Who are you? Live from Studio One in the Steel Cow Building, located in the heart of historic Wakefield Village, home of Brickley's Ice Cream, Yum Yum Yum, and Johnny Cakes. The Eden Show is a production of the Greenhouse Entertainment Group. And I'm Dan Chaka. Tonight, Eden's guest is the one, the only, the incomparable Eden herself. And now, here she is, <laughs> Eden Castile. Hello. It's me. The one. The only. Why on earth did the Eden Show feature Eden? Because it's the Eden Show and I can do what I want. That's right. right. She's our fearless leader and That's we right. toe the line. That's right. I'm a dear leader is what I am. Dear leader. <laughs> yeah, totally. Dan, I am glad to have you on board as always. I'm glad to be here. If you're watching, please go ahead and type in the comments about where you're watching from. We're trying to figure out which camera to watch. We're watching that camera right there. Okay. So, yes. Hi. Uh, the guest tonight is me and I am taking requests. I am taking questions. If you have questions about... Who the heck am I or what Dan does or anything like that? You're welcome to ask us questions and ask for requests. So uh, why am I the guest tonight? Well, because scheduling is sometimes a pain. That's why. <laughs> so uh, I had a bunch of different you know, guests who were considering this date. And then one by one, every single one of them fell through. Yeah, but none of them are as important as you anyway. So Precisely. we can do the show without guests. I, I love you, Dan. You're so truthful. So <laughs> got to tell it like I calls it like I sees it. I he is tell my you. personal <laughs> MC and my lawyer. So yes. yeah, he definitely knows how to do that. So anyway, I thought, well, what the heck? I have never done an Eden show where I actually got to just play for an hour and I am a Leo, so I can do this. <laughs> and with a real reason that um, I wanted to do this is because, yeah, time ran out. And I was expecting this weekend to have a big gig in New York City. So I was going to be performing at Don't Tell Mama uh, in New York City. You might remember the wonderful graphic that I made. Isn't that nice? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so good. Little days of our lives. Little, yeah. little, little, yeah. little Valentine's Day. I can play a little bit of sad uh, you know, soap opera music right there. Unfortunately. We're not going to be able to do that gig this weekend. So now I get to hide that. So I was thinking I was going to have a guest on tonight. I was going to make it real easy and then head to New York the next day and then perform on Saturday. But unfortunately, our, our show got uh, canceled. So that happens. It's the breaks, man. You know, well, it's better I mean, anyways. You don't really want to be <laughs> in New York City on 9-11, Eden. I mean, realistically speaking. Apparently, nobody did. No. And nobody wanted to go to New York City on 9-11 and certainly not to a cabaret at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, But I want to thank uh, those of you who did express interest. And <laughs> we will probably uh, rebook at a later date. It was going to be really good. So I'm going to do some of those songs tonight just because I love those songs so much. Well, and we should sing them. They should. They shouldn't go to waste. They shouldn't be just up here. They should be out there. That's right. That's right. They shouldn't just live here. They should live there. Yes. So tonight I will do some of those, and I will also take some requests. Make sure I do this the right one. Yeah, that was last week. That was Lauren. Lauren okay. from and she was great, wasn't she? Oh my gosh. When that was so much fun. Oh, she was really wonderful. Yeah, she we've had a sweetheart. bunch of really good shows in a row. We really have, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that streak may end tonight, but. Here's hoping. So, you and I will have a good time. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what so, do we have? We only have three viewers anyway. We only so. have three viewers anyway. Thank you, three. <laughs> we appreciate that so much. All right. So now I rewrote a song. I like to do this. This is something I like to do. So I'm pulling it up. I can't even see myself on the screen anymore because I'm looking at this. Mm. All right. So, uh, but one of the things I get asked is kind of, Eden, what do you do? And then I ask them, legal or illegal? And then I tell them based on that answer. But this is basically what I do. Avoid the illegal. Avoid the illegal. That's right. I'm talking to my lawyer. Sorry. Especially on the YouTube. Especially on the YouTube. Okay. <laughs> well, then then I'm you're going to listen to this, five listeners, and then this will self-destruct. Yes. But this is kind of what I do. So I'm going to show you what I do. I can take your suggestions and turn them into songs that rhyme. 
I can live stream a show and be the host and the guest at the same time. I can teach you to sing and play and perform just like a star. Make your set list, be your piano player, rehearse your band, book your venue, teach you technology, co-write your songs, create your social media graphics, and help you get tips in the jar, cause I'm a Eden, E-D-E-N, I'll say it again, I'm the mother to two children, and they both live under my roof, my husband is a hottie, but I don't need to give you proof. My dad plays piano and I sing just like my mom. You can learn all about me at EdenCastile.com because I'm Eden, E-D-E-N. I'll say it again. If you come to me breathy, you know I'm going to fix your tone. If you can't get cast in shows, I'll help you make it on your own. If you want a producer, I'll help you write and record and actually make it fun. I ain't no Svengali. Unless you're needing one, cause I'm Eden. E-D-E-N. I'll say it again. I gig online in person all over the ocean state. You can sing by my open mics, cause no singer should have to wait. If you want to work with me, well, you know just what to do. Sing a song and send it to me, because that's your interview. Please book with Eden, E-D-E-N. I'll say it again. Just book with Eden, E-D-E-N, EdenCastile.com. Oh, yeah. Apologies to Libra and Stoller. <laughs> Actually, mad props to Libra and Stoller. That was awesome. Oh, yes. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I like writing parodies. They're fun. I saw a lot of myself in that. You did? Yes. Giving me pieces to rehearse with, doing it on my own if we don't get cast. Mm -hmm. And actually, it looks like Robin Dyer commented <laughs> that that is completely, completely accurate. accurate. <laughs> That's right. So if you are a member like on Facebook, if you're my Facebook friend, I think you could actually have your comments seen on Restream down here. So um, if comments come in, I'll be happy to kind of show those off. So please make sure you do. And there's Alan Hill saying, hi, Eden. Hi, Alan. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. So make sure that you stick around so that way we can have you uh, give me some suggestions for Sounds Like a Song. It's funny. I mean, every time I, I have a guest on and I say, hey, we're going to do this improv thing at the end, they all say, oh, really? I'm scared. But now you're going to do it to me. And you know what I'm thinking? Oh, really? I'm scared. So is Dan. <laughs> so is Dan. Yeah. And this is David. David, hi. Thank you for watching. Wow. David and I sang this morning at eight o'clock Eastern in a choir called the Transatlantics. Like, how do we come up with that, right? This little pickup band that we created called the Transatlantics. I just happen to have video. You want to see it, right? Of course. Okay. So does everybody. So does everybody, right? You want to see the video? So yeah, this is actually the second performing I've done in the past 12 hours. The first was this morning at about 8.30 Eastern. Uh, there was a group of musicians uh, from Europe, from Canada, from the U.S., and different parts of the U.S., I was holding down New England and we got together and we performed live together. So if you know me at all, you know that I really like music technology, case in point, case in point. But I have worked a lot on uh, low latency technology, which means basically it speeds up the musical part of a signal. So that way you can play in real time with people. If you've ever been in a Zoom room in the past 18 months, you know what's the problem. Who hasn't been in a Zoom room? Right, right. And what happens when you get in the Zoom room? The echo, ho, 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 ho. Right. Oh, you're cutting people off, talking yeah. over people. Yeah, it's total pain. So that's why everybody hates Zoom for music. But there are options. And my favorite option is called Soundjack. So Soundjack was invented by Alexander Caro, who lives in Leipzig. And he actually invented it, I think, as part of a PhD program, right? About 15 years ago or more. So uh, he invented this and then people were using it as a way of kind of you could have people performing in different cities at the same time and then live streaming it. And then, of course, when the pandemic hit, that suddenly became critically important. So I've used Soundjack really successfully. I have a bunch of examples on my YouTube site. You should subscribe. 
And you can see me trying out Soundjack with pro musicians uh, because it's so useful for music makers. So this morning at eight o'clock, a bunch of us got together and we created this group called the Transatlantics and we performed for Alex. Uh, he was actually giving a presentation in Leipzig to, I think, to his local government. So we performed a Suzanne Vega song called Caramel. I was so thrilled that he knew it. So I'm going to see if I can actually get this up here so you can see it. There it is. And there we are. Look, there's Wendy. There's Wendy Jones, our friend. I'm going to turn off this graphic so you can see that. So it's a little bit soft, but you can hear. Alex is the bass player up in the upper right-hand corner. And Wendy, our friend Wendy Jones, is in the lower right. To think of cinnamon and long. Isn't that great? It's amazing. So we're watching a music video, but realize that we are thousands of miles apart. But we are playing like we are all together. It really is. So Alex was in uh, the building performing live, and then the rest of us had our faces on a screen so we could show this off for his local government. Your name. I know your skin. Isn't it great? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting technology. Yeah. It really is. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. You can see the rest of it actually at his site. Uh, I can put, I'll put the link in YouTube. It's actually also on my Facebook because we actually broadcast that live this morning. So we did Caramel and then we did Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. And the Hallelujah was a little tougher. I would think so. Yeah, it was not a total hallelujah moment. <laughs> uh, so we got through a little bit of it, but we had a little bit of a trouble with the synchronization after that. So is the technology perfect? No, not yet. Uh, but it's really wonderful. And David, that was David in the upper uh, left-hand corner right there, and he performed as well. So uh, if you're a musician, if uh, you like to make music and you want to try this out, you're welcome to contact me. I'll be happy to talk you through it. I do that every week. That's one of the things I do. You, you know, Eden, maybe you should start that. You're the guest. Uh-huh. Let me ask you. Okay, ask what me. What kind of things do you do? <laughs> what do I do? That song wasn't enough. Well, we know you sing. Uh-huh. We know you write. Mm -hmm. We know you teach. Mm -hmm. We know you produce. Mm -hmm. But the tech, the tech. is incredible. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's changed my office, revolutionized my office. As a how has fact. how has it done that? If I hadn't, well, in January before the pandemic hit, I decided that driving, as much as I like coming down to the Steel Cow Building, yeah. it <laughs> takes an hour and a half out of my day, and it was easier for me to start doing it online. And Zoom wasn't working. Yeah, and um, you know, you set me up, and we were doing my lessons for a good month. Mm -hmm. before everything shut down, actually six weeks before everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was already equipped with an entire studio in my office with the interfaces and the microphones and the lighting. And so when we went to virtual court, I don't can't tell you how many people would say to me, you were the only person we could hear mm -hmm. because everybody else was using the Zoom, but I had the boom mic mm -hmm. and I had my room isolated. I had it soundproofed. And it I'm made actually turning you up right now. Make turn sure me up. Turn me up. Yeah, I can hear it Dan made, just fine. Let me make sure. It made presentations <laughs> so much better. And I think, you know, that's part of influencing judges and other attorneys or even letting the other client know that they're screwed mm -hmm. is they should be able to see how your presentation is. And if it's real professional and you've got your graphics to throw up or mm -hmm. your items to put on a screen share and you've already highlight stuff, it's pretty intimidating to make that as a presentation. And um, it was really helpful. So I've helped you tell clients they're screwed. I'm so happy. I've You've helped me tell other people's clients they're screwed too. <laughs> I'm very, very happy. That's just great news. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. I just got an actual message from our friend Keith Munslow, who was a guest. Hey, Keith, you're messaging me. Come be on the Eden Show again. So Keith was, yes, he said, do I have any plans Saturday night? I think he's going to give me a gig. Well, Keith, that's so funny. You should say, hey, do I have any plans Saturday night? I don't because I'm not going to New York. So <laughs> I'm a cheap date tonight. I'm totally cheap. Actually, I think I saw that Keith was doing, there's a new improv thing coming up or something. He yeah. is. Yes. There's a new improv. It's Kismet Improv in Providence. And Keith is doing some stuff up there uh, at the CTC, Contemporary Theater Company, right down the street. Uh, they're going to have improv as well. They just had a fantastic festival last weekend called the Black and Funny Improv Festival. Oh. First annual fantastic congratulations to tammy brown and to tiffany fenton for putting that together it was wonderful 
they invited you know, you know black improv performers because they're underrepresented in mm. the improv world and there's wonderful. So they came from um, Minnesota. They came from DC. They came from Baltimore. They came from all over and they performed wonderfully outside on the CTC patio. So they'll be coming back. So there's a lot of improv going on. So yeah, Keith, if you're watching Facebook right now, type in what you want me to do. All right. Why not? Hey, Burned. He was part of uh, this morning from Cologne. Greetings from Cologne. Thank you for staying up so late to watch. <laughs> <Appreciate> it. <laughs> all right, Dan, since you talked morning. about it's one in the morning, it's one in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Well, you know, but he's a jazz guitarist. He's just getting going. That's true. Right? That's Absolutely. True. So, uh, Dan, I want to hear you sing something. So, I know. You want to do a duet? Let's do a do duet. Do? Okay. Although, do I know the words for that? You got the words up there? Yeah. What is that one? Yeah. Okay. So, this is a John Prine song. Good. I'm glad I can see it right there. Make sure you get that mic right up to your mouth. Just like she don't like her, her eggs all <laughs> runny. She thinks crossing her legs is funny. She looks down her nose at money. I don't. She gets it on like the Easter bunny. Maybe. She's my baby and I'm her honey. Never gonna let her go. This is gonna be fun. He ain't got late in a month of Sundays. I caught him once and he was wearing my undies. He ain't too sharp, but he gets things done. He drinks his beer like it's oxygen he's my baby i'm his honey i'm never gonna let him go in spite of ourselves we'll end up sitting on a rainbow against all odds honey we're the big door prize we're gonna spite our nose is right off of our faces. You taught me that. There no, won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. I do hand motions while playing piano, while duetting, while live streaming. That is the definition of what I do. Multitasker. That's right. Oh, is it my turn? It's mine. Okay. She don't think all my jokes are corny. <laughs> I do. Convict movies make her horny. True. She likes ketchup on her scrambled eggs. Also true. Swears like a sailor when she shaves her legs. That's me. She takes a licking, keeps on ticking, never gonna let her go. Good. What's the next part? <laughs> there we go. There you go. He's got more balls than a big brass monkey. He's a whacked out weirdo and a big love junkie. Sly as a fox, crazy as a loon. Payday's coming and he's howling at the moon. He's my baby. I don't mean maybe. I'm never going to let him go. In spite, In spite of, of ourselves, ourselves, we'll end up sitting on a rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. We're, We're going, going to spite our noses right, right off of our faces. There, there won't be nothing, nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. Everybody at home, drum cry. There won't be nothing, nothing but, but big Oh, in spite, spite of ourselves, ourselves we'll, we'll end up, up sitting on a rainbow. rainbow. Against all odds, honey, we're, we're the big door prize. We're, we're going to spite. Our nose is right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. In spite of ourselves. Sorry, John, but we tried. <laughs> we did try. And you've done that really successfully in a lot of places. That's been a lot of fun. Yes, and it's interesting because when I started singing it, it was still alive and COVID took him down hard. We miss you, Left John us Brian. a legion of fans who were just devastated by the the absence of the singing postman, John Prine. Yeah. yeah a Texas legend. Yeah. Oh, thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that was wonderful, but if you'd like to hear Dan or me sing something else, I have a variety up here that I can offer for you. And I do. Actually, I'm going to sing one from uh, the show that I didn't get to do. Oh, good, 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 good. So... Um, the show was called Love Me Down, and it was supposed to be about kind of, you know, love affair going down, right? Going south or something like that. So the songs were a mix of that. And I'm not giving away the farm by talking about it, because if we finally do this show, uh, we'll probably end up changing half of it anyway. But they're great, great songs. And we had a fun time putting them together and imagining how it was going to go. So um, this one is actually from On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, Ooh. that musical. And Barbara sang this one. 
I think it's actually in the movie version, not in the stage version, but it's such a great song mm. that I thought it would be fun to do. So this is called Go to Sleep. Go to Sleep. When you know there's someone loving you And you know there's someone you love too And they're not the same <laughs> What do you do? Go to sleep, girl. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Close your eyes and hide from every care. When you wake up, they may not be there. But tell me, how can I sleep? Tell me who could when you see your whole life tangled up good. I could drink, I could weep, but how could I sleep? How could I sleep? I mean, really, how could I sleep? And when you and someone have a date, And when you and someone stay out late, it was bad too, but I had to. And they're not the same. Who gets the gate? Go to sleep, girl. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Comes the dawn. I may not feel the same. Comes the dawn, I may not know your name. <laughs> but tell me, how can I sleep? Look what I've done. Messed around with two men. Soon you'll have none. As you sow, so you reap. Which is why I can't sleep. I might need a lawyer. Know anybody? I can arrange it. Go to sleep. That is go to sleep from on a clear day you can see forever. Yeah. How could you not perform that? That's why, you know, I, I think everything from this weekend should come out. Right. Music's right. meant to be shared. Right. Right. Yeah. I can feel it. I'm scratching the itch. Yes. Scratching the itch. There it is. Yes. Well, yeah, it's such a great song, right? Mm. And I got to work on this over the summer, actually. I was part of this really, really cool um, experience called the St. Louis Cabaret Conference. So for eight weeks, I worked with some wonderful, wonderful cabaret singers from all over the United States. And we coached with four incredible talents who gave their time, their expertise, uh, such great guidance. It was Jeff Harner, Karen Mason, Christine Andreas, and Faith Prince, mm. so who are all fantastic singers, performers, cabaret artists. They perform all over, and uh, the coaching was phenomenal. So I got to coach a lot of this stuff for this show with them, mm -hmm. and we were online every week. We were using the tech. So my experience with you is coaching, mm -hmm. as with all your students. You're, you're everyone's coach. I am everyone's coach. Yes, I am yes. Coach Castile. That's what I am. Yes. When mm -hmm. people ask me who you are, I don't tell them you're my music teacher. I don't tell them that I do a show with you. I say she is my music coach. I'm a music coach. Yes. yes. What that means basically, Thank right, you. is that, yeah, I mean, I teach the notes, but I'm not as interested in like saying, oh, you should sing it like this, like you're Julia Child. Instead, it's more like sing it with this intention or take a breath here, right? Um, or is it quieter. Right. Like the version I just did, I got coached on to make it different. So that way it really becomes your own song. Right. So you're not trying to do like a karaoke or a carbon copy. What I find the strong suit is, is that you give us several things to choose. So, uh oh, oh Karen Besson says, and life, life coach. coach too. Yes. No, no, no. 
We're not representing Life Coach. No oh, liability incurred. That's right. No that's problem. just the added bonus of having right. Eden as your friend and someone who works with you. Right. But what's awesome is that Eden will pick out a genre or four or five things that she really thinks will highlight where you're at in your career at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And she'll apply it towards whatever's going on, whether you want to do an open mic or you're going for an audition or whatever. And if that audition doesn't go very well, she will take that phone call and let you bitch about <laughs> You know, they accompany us to play it at two, two octaves too high after you handed them Eden's notes with the big A written on the top of it. Yet, for some reason, they got to do it in F. This contains T and it's going to spill. <laughs> nope. No, it's not. Names okay. will remain. Yeah. The names will remain. Actually, this is my mother-in-law in this oh. suite. That's her mom. Isn't that nice? Oh. Yeah. She's a wonderful lady. So, no, it's I will. I mean, I will coach you through auditions. I will coach you if you're doing a one-person show. I will coach you if you just you're you want to get better at stuff. I coach people who do want to get better at karaoke. I coach people who want to do singing competitions like Wakefield Idol mm. and they want to try out for The Voice and America's Got Talent. I do that all the time. I help people make audition videos for college. Uh, I help people uh, prepare for community theater auditions or pro theater auditions. You also push gently. You, you don't I like knock how you us said gently. Yeah, you don't <laughs> knock us down to build us up, but you are not shy with the criticism when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. You get the little smirk, the not going to work with you. <laughs> but you give us a suggestion as to what will work. That's right. It's always important. That's right. No, I, I mean, I've, I've been a recipient of, you know, negative criticism. Uh, that's a good story, actually. Um, worst criticism I ever got. All right. Because you're asking, right? You didn't ask me, but ask me, what was the worst uh, performing experience I ever had? I'd love to know. What okay. was the worst performing experience? It was experience? actually in Austria. So I was over in Graz and I was doing a summer a vocal program because actually I was an opera singer. Right. So some of you know me from the opera world. So I, I still do it. But I'm the somewhere in the mid 2000s. I went over and I was studying at a wonderful program in Graz, Austria for opera. And I got to sing with an orchestra several times while I was over there. It was a wonderful experience, except I had a coach there who, after I got done rehearsing with the orchestra for a major competition, ripped me up one side and down the other about everything I had done wrong. I literally walked off the stage feeling good and she took me down to a valley. Yeah. And it was all about her. And I knew it, you know, one side of my brain knew that it was all about her, but I was vulnerable and she really got me. And so I spent the rest of the day in terrible shape and I started trying to practice and get better at all the things she said I did wrong. So when I actually got on stage that night, um, I sang not lousy, but not great. You know, I survived it, but you don't know that by inside I was going like this, but my brain is saying, oh my God, I, I had it like, it was, it was the closest I ever got to an out of body experience. It really was. Damn negativity. It's horrible. Haters, yeah. haters everywhere. So I was going, oh and I thought, I'm going to look over at the conductor. I'm just going to tell him I'm going home. Is that okay? I really <laughs> thought that. So one side of my brain is saying, he's right there. All I have to do is say, I'm out and walk off the stage in front of 3,000 people. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's how bad it was. And then the other side of my brain is going, are you insane? Right now you're performing. Go. <laughs> right? So all of that was happening in my head. And, you know, I was vulnerable for that. And I, I take, you know, I own my part of that. But mm. she did not help. So and I found out that was her last year there. I found out that she didn't get asked back. So there you was, go. Yeah. There so, go. but from that experience, and if you've ever had that happen where you've had a negative experience with somebody, especially around your voice, please realize you're not alone, that it happens to absolutely everybody. And you can talk with somebody about it and realize that they, she was trying to say a couple of things to me, but it just came out because there was a lot of negativity in her in general. Uh, so I try really hard not to do that while still telling you what you need to fix in order to be the best you can possibly be. So that was actually a really great, horrible experience to have. Well, you know, I, I came back to see you and I had been crushed when I was a teenager, absolutely crushed. You know, <laughs> you have no business singing. I can't do anything with that voice, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and th that came from, you know, Earlier, exactly. I started um, playing violin when I was like, you know, I went from piano to violin mm -hmm. and then we moved out to rural Rhode Island and I was told that only girls played violin and they gave me a trumpet. What? Yes. Yes. We don't do that anymore. Crushed boys and girls. me. We Crushed don't do that. me. 
I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's what it is. So this is a nurturing environment. This is why we love working with Eden, which mm -hmm. is why she has a huge following of people who love to uh, seek her out for guidance, and including other professionals. It's always amazing mm -hmm. with some of your guests. You know, we have these accomplished musicians, and mm -hmm. they, they look to you for coaching and input. It's true. It's true that, uh, and part of the reason I am doing this show at all, ladies and gentlemen, is partly because I'm a Leo and I love to perform, but it's also because I know that performers need places to perform. Uh, we needed it even before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, live was like, live streaming was about the only thing you could do safely. But now that things are opening back up again, I still hear from a lot of performers that it's still really rough out there and they get things canceled at the last minute. And it's not kind of the kind of gig that they think is really showing them off. A lot of them still feel really rusty over what they're doing, mm -hmm. or they're doing so many gigs are completely overworked and they just want a breather. So I am here for that. So that way, you know, singers who need a safe place to perform can come here and have a good time. They can try a little bit of the tech with me if they want and just have a good time. Right. And I hope it's enjoyable for you viewers. Um, thank you, Robin. She finds your strengths. Yes. yes. Every singer I have in my studio is incredibly strong. So there's a note over here that says, let's talk more sing. Yeah. Is, there, is there something <laughs> something else from Saturday's show that needs to get done? Oh, yeah. It's got to be something. I know we've got a whole pile of music over there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to sing this one. This one's uh, crazy. Why not? So, oh, oh, okay. You want a comedic one? Yeah. All right. I'll give you a comedic one. We've been serious enough. So this is, oh, I'm not going to tell you. This is by a guy named Ray Jessel. And I've never done it like at a cabaret, but I just think this would be fun to do. So enjoy. Let her rip. Okay, let's see. I hear the murmur of a passing train. I hear an oboe play a sad refrain. I see the rain upon my window pane. And I think about sex the scent of jasmine on a summer night the song of starlings at the first daylight the magic of a rainbow at the sight i think about yeah sex you may say that i have got a one-track mind maybe what you say of me is true but while you're saying that I've got a one-track mind, I'm thinking about sex with you and you. The restless flutter of a butterfly, a shooting star as it streaks across the sky. Some speak of wonder, some of God, but I, 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 I. You may ask me, why do I obsess this much? Can't I think of something else instead? But while you're asking me, I must confess this much. I'm wondering how you'd be in bed. Especially if you live in uh, Wyoming. Standing alone beside a waterfall. We have no viewers in Wyoming. Amidst the frenzy of a shopping mall. It seems there's nothing turns me off at all, except maybe writing checks. <laughs> but after that, I'm back again pursuing it. Each fantasy I have has got a zoo in it. Perhaps because I'm not actually doing it. I think about, explore each kink about, I bore my shrink about, sex, 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 sometimes food, then sex. Awesome. That was only a little weird with you right here, but um, ah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, just, yeah, a, I'm just part of the furniture. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm an accessory. So that's by Ray Jessel, <laughs> and he was on America's Got Talent in his 80s. Wow, which makes me think this is a good segue to mm -hmm. hype a little production yeah. you're hype, putting hype, forward. Hype. Uh, the second weekend in November mm -hmm. with another octogenarian centered around sex. I can't <laughs> figure it out. I'll drop the name if I must, but I think you know what I'm talking about, Eden. Eliza Collins. Yes, the one and only. The one and only. Yes. So yes, she was my guest on the Eden Show back in February. She is one of my clients, and she's a client. She's a friend. She's absolutely wonderful. Eliza, yes. And she is doing her second one-woman show at the Pump House in Wakefield in November 14th, and it's going to be called Sex and the Older Girl. 
So uh, she wrote the lyrics. I wrote the music. Everything in the show is original. She lived it. Uh, oh, yeah. Just yeah. like her last one woman show, which was phenomenal. That was my life as a failure. Oh. Yes, it was really good. So Eliza is now in the process, right? She's been working on this show for a year. I have a program for uh, some clients called All Access, which means that we come up with a big, big performance goal, and then we have 12 months to make it a reality. So I have three people doing that right now, and Eliza's one of the three. So her big goal was to do this wonderful show that she wrote completely by herself, and she's done a marvelous job. So she's now taking it out to different open mics to test out the material, which is what we do. So the other uh, two people, here's one, <coughs> Jordan Becker. Yeah. So Jordan is uh, lives here in Wakefield, and he runs a pizza company called Pure Pizza, which makes delicious pizza delicious we have it often and he's also a fantastic singer and performer so his uh, big project was to front a rock band so on sunday october 17th he will be at pump house fronting a rock band awesome we are doing songs by the yardbirds uh pete townsend paul simon uh who else we got this eddie vetter we've got some uh what is it it's called stone I can't remember the name of it. Stone Soup, I think is the name of it. Uh, we've got a wide mix of stuff, and they're all really wonderful songs. And Buddy Miles tune is actually a cover of, um, I think, a Larry Skinner tune. So Jordan has been in here rehearsing, and my band is fantastic. So he came up with the songs. We worked on them over the course of the year, even during the pandemic. And then I helped him find the band. I'm rehearsing the band, and then we're performing. I got him the venue, and I'm going to be playing keyboards and uh, singing some backup for him. But I get to watch him do his thing. Oh my God! I'm We've looking got, here. He's yeah. got Stephen Groob. He's got our friend. Our friend. Mm -hmm. Both of them have done saxophone, or uh, no? Stephen did uh, clarinet for my Rosh Hashanah song. He right? did. Stephen and did. Yeah. Jordan mm -hmm. did in your when we were doing the pandemic performances in the backyard. Mm -hmm. He did the saxophone on "Let There Be Love" for me. He did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Jordan was going to play sax in the show. He's going to play guitar in the show, and he's going to sing. Oh he my God! And you have Ed Valley, Joe Potenza, and Rick Kutu. I do. And I see Paula Claire there too. Yes. A lot of my Eden Show guests wind up in different productions I do. Have you gathered? So yes, Ed Valley, fantastic guitar player. Joe Potenza, world-class bassist. Rick Kudo, fantastic drummer. And he also made this graphic for me. Steven Groove, fantastic sax player. Paula Claire is going to be singing backup with me and I'll be on backup vocals and keys. So that's Sunday, October 17th at the Pump House. You're going to be hearing more about that as time gets on, but I'm really excited. So Jordan is doing this all access thing. Eliza is doing all access. And then my last one is Robin. So I don't have a graphic for Robin yet, uh, but Robin Dyer, our friend, is writing. An amazing songwriter. I want to do her songs. I, yeah. Matter of fact, some of them I can't get out of my head. As you know, I'm not going to say so damn poor. Right. Oh, <laughs> I did it. Right. Robin has appeared on, uh, she did Peacedale Hayride, the first one we did a couple of years ago. And then she has also was on the most recent album, Peacedale Hayride Volume 2, singing So Damn Poor, which she co-wrote with me and our friend Mark Cutler. So Robin is actually now getting known in songwriter circles. And Ooh. she has written, she writes, I don't know how many songs a week the lady writes. It's a lot. It's, it's Mozart level prolific. So, and then we work on them together online. And then my job is to help her produce those and get those going. So that's what I do in the all access program is you come up with a big goal that you think, oh, I've always wanted to do it, but I don't know how I help you with the how, and it takes us a year to do it. But by the end of the year, you have done it. So if you are interested, I am going to be doing some new goals for new people, probably starting in early 2022. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right at you. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 The pandemic set me back a little. I understand. All. I understand. But I'm out of that funk now. I'm He's out of that funk oh, now. Oh, good. I'm, enjoy I'm good. enjoying my time with Eden. I I'm so say. glad. I'm glad. I'm enjoying my time with you, too. Oh. So we've talked enough. Glenn Duell has a request. Another song. Another song. Ain't misbehaving. Oh. Ain't misbehaving. I think I know that one cold, so we'll find out. Ooh. All right. So for Glenn. All right. Can you find me the lyrics just to make sure I get I'm it right? I'm doing it right now. No one to talk with all by myself. No one to walk with, but I'm happy on the shelf. A misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. Do you know it, Dan? A little. Okay. 
I know for certain the one I love. I'm through with flirting. It's just you I'm thinking of. Right. They misbehaving. I'm saving my love for you. Like Jack Horner in the corner. <laughs> Don't, Don't go, go nowhere. nowhere. What do I care? Your kisses are worth waiting for. Believe me. I don't stay out late, don't, don't care, care to go. go, I'm home about eight, just, just me and my radio, they misbehaving. misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. Now when I go into a little bit of the piano, whenever I do these online, I like talk to talk through it because then I don't have to think about my solo as much. Because I'm going, what are my fingers doing right here? I don't know. They work all on their own. Like, like Jack, Jack Horner, Horner in the corner. Don't, don't go, go nowhere. nowhere. What, what do, do I, I care? care? Your, Your kisses are worth waiting for me. I don't stay out late, don't care to go, I'm home about it, just me and my live stream show, a misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. That worked. Oh, I love singing with you. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. Ooh, look First at this. We're getting some quotes. Oh, Who's, yes. Thank you, Marianne McNee. Marianne McNee was my friend when I lived in Quantico-Tog, oh. and her daughter was one of my students. I used to write a children's musical. Oh, that's, okay, that's, you know, they say, don't work with children or animals. Oh, yeah. Not a good idea. <laughs> when I first moved to Rhode Island in 2010, right? This is like the Ask Me Anything, right? When I first moved to Rhode Island in 2010, we lived in Quantico-Tog, okay? Try to spell that. No. Okay. Quanti. So Quanti for short, right? Yes. Which is down near Charlestown, extreme South County. And uh, I was on the beach and my husband was trying to get me uh, to meet some of the moms, you know, on the beach. Cause I, I moved here in the summer and I missed this one woman and it wasn't Marianne, but it was somebody uh, who knew her. And uh, she said, well, we used to have the kids do something theatrical and we haven't had that happen. Maybe you could put together something, you know, a little theater thing. I hear you do that kind of thing. I jokingly said, well, I could write him a musical. I was just joking. And she looked at me. And she said, can you do that? And Oops. I realized, yeah, I can. So that's how you get me, guys, is that you give me a big hairy goal and I want to do it. So Catherine Frost did that. So um, within a year, I, it also forced me to go and learn about the history of the area where I had just moved. And I love history. And I went to like every social event they had in little tiny Kwani. And there is actually a Kwani Historical Society, which is really wonderful. They had a lot of information. So I read all these wonderful stories about this area that had hundreds of years of history. Mm. I came from you know, Michigan. So I mean, Michigan's got history too, but Rhode Island is history. So the following summer, I announced that I was going to be doing a musical for kids called Kwani the Musical. And Marianne's daughter, Emily, came in and performed in it. And she was in it, I think, just about every year. And I did it for six consecutive years. And then the final year, we did a movie, Kwani the Movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved away here to Wakefield and all the way to Wakefield. All the way to far off Wakefield. 10 minutes, boy. It's like the other side of the back of lunch. Back of lunch. Back of lunch. <laughs> so I'm still in touch with a lot of the kids who did that. And it was also a way for my own kids, you know, to have some theater to do in the summer. So I wrote a new musical every year. And we performed it in the Kwani Grange. It was a fundraiser for the Historical Society. And it was great, great fun. And now those kids know the history of that area. And I do. I'll remember it always. I wrote a song about the rocks in Kwani. I wrote a song about the Hurricane of 38. Uh, it was really great fun because it was such great stories. Your knowledge of Kwani is endless <laughs> because we went there to shoot some doc footage for my video that's, that's right. coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And um, I got the tour all through Kwani. She knew the doc. She knew where the sun would be. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, she knew every house that you could see as we were going down the street. There was a story about everybody. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that when I moved here. That Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that. Like, well, that's where so-and-so used to live. 
that was where that old homestead was, or that's where the casino was, or that's what. So now I can play that same game. Oh, I remember that house before they tore it down and built a new one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a, a great blessing. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, it was really, really fun to do Quantity the Musical. And uh, it, was, it was so much fun. We had a couple of adults participate as well. Uh, that were local legends in Kwani, especially my friend Tom Batista. So Tom was in charge oh. of a local band in the area. And that was the first band I ever played in out here was the Q band. And it was all the Kwani band. The Kwani band. Yeah, the Q band. We said, we play for free and some say we're worth it. <laughs> and we just got together in the garage on a beautiful summer day and would just play Route 66 or whatever we wanted. And uh, Tom was a producer for CBS, so he knew how to put together a show. I learned stuff from Tom Batista. And uh, sadly, he passed away last year from COVID, and we miss him a whole lot. That so damn COVID. I know, the damn COVID. So, yes. uh, But he will always be here. And every time I do a production, I think a little bit of how he would do it. Mm. So I know he'd be happy, and he would have been singing on this right now. So thank you, Angela, for the thumbs up. So appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn. I'm glad that you like that. We are taking requests. So I'm going to play another one. Okay, we don't even need requests. You still right. got stuff on the roster. I still got stuff on the roster here. over here. So uh, one of the ones I would have done uh, this weekend. Let's see. Which one would I have done this weekend? Do I want to do a, a nice one? You want to hear something sad or something happy? I don't know. I have a request. What's your request? I want to hear Linda Ronstadt, Blue by You. Oh, you do? I do. Okay. I love how you, you love do how that. that. I love you don't have that. to. We can do something else. We'll do that towards the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. I'll do this one, even though that's because this would have been part of it. I would have been singing uh, this gorgeous song. It's called. No, do I want to do that one? No, I don't want to do that. No one. one can see what you're doing. No one can see what you I'm do doing. Whatever you want. All right, this I'll is, do this one. You're, this the, the, you're, the, one. you're the guest today. I know. I can decide, but you know, this is this is nerve wracking. No, it's not. It's fine. I'm just being picky. Yes. So this is by Jason Robert Brown. This oh. is called a part of that, and it's from a show called The Last Five Years. And this was going to be my opener. So basically, it's about a relationship that might not be what she thinks it is. Right. They all? Yeah, I'm talking to a guy who, <laughs> who does divorces. Yeah, absolutely. So this should be like most of your clients. Yes. Right? So. One day we're just like, leave it to Beaver. One day it's just like, typical life. And then he's off on a trip to Jamie land, staring catatonic out the window, barely even breathing all the while. And then he'll smile, his eyes light up and deep within the ground, without a sound. A moment comes to life, and I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. Next day, it's just like it never happened. We're making dinners. We're making plans. And then he's off on the mule train to Jamie land, handful after handful of Doritos, circling the apartment, logging miles. And then he smiles, his eyes light up, and how can I complain? Yes, he's insane. But look what he can do, and I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. And it's true, I tend to follow in his stride. Instead of side by side, I take his cues. True. But there's no question, there's no doubt. I said I'd stick it out and follow through. It's bad advice, isn't it? Yes, it is. And when I do, and then he smiles, and where 
else can I go? I didn't know the rules do not apply. And then he smiles and nothing else makes sense while he invents the world that passes by. And I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. Aren't I? Yes, I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. I'm a part of that. <laughs> You've heard that before, haven't you? I sure have. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Judge got no sympathy for that. <laughs> no? No. It's true. Fool me once, four. You know that? Mm -hmm. Fool me once, shame yeah. on you. Uh huh. Fool, Fool me, me twice, twice, shame on me. me. Yeah. yeah. Fool me 30 times. You're done. <laughs> Don't waste my time. <laughs> That's a great show. It's from the last five years, oh, right? It's wonderful. And so, yeah, thank you, Angela. And thank you, Mary, so much. Thank you, Roger. Oh. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is so much fun. Uh, it's a great show. And it's normally done by, you know, an actress in her 30s. So I feel very privileged that I get to do that. Well, um, I'm, you're still in your 30s. I'm 30 plus. Yeah, that's it. I'm 30 with, with bonus, I guess. That's um, right. So I want to let you all know that Tish Adams is our guest next week on The Eden Show. Yeah, Tish. I'm so, so if happy. Tish was on that gig in Austria, she'd uh -huh. have been like, <laughs> Yeah, she would have. <laughs> I should have had her as my agent. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tish has a <laughs> weekly radio show on the URI uh, radio station. Is that W? R I U 90.3. Yep, every Thursday morning, I think 9 to 11 or is it uh, 8 to 10? I don't know, but it's been going on for 30 plus years because she was doing it when she wrote for my newspaper. Yeah. So you're going to want to tune in to see Tish. She is a fantastic jazz singer. She's got a new series of, of music at the Music Mansion up in Providence called Music Scene. And then she's also going to be starting to bring that to Pump House. But I've seen her many times. I've had her on different uh, projects that I've been doing. And I'm thrilled that she's going to be sitting right here between us. And if you have a chance and Eden does another master class with Tish, because we did several of them during the pandemic, mm -hmm. nurturing, helpful, critical, mm -hmm. but with a lot of encouragement while she's making you work it better and better. That's the Tish Adams she's magic, TM. TM. Right. Absolutely. Completely. So she'll be my guest next week. Hey, it is actually hey. 7.52. So if you have song requests, like we you have one. a lyric. A lyric? We got one just okay, for you. Okay, good. What am I going to do? You ready? Your buddy, ready. Ed Valley, is sorry that he's not here to be live, but he made sure he's get, we're rehearsing for a gig tomorrow. That's right. Sounds like a song title. You ready for this one? First okay. time you've heard it. Okay. What is love? <laughs> Baby, don't hurt me <laughs> no more. Ed, come on. Co ed. Okay, what is love? I got to make up a new song to What is Love. Please type something in the chat. All right, give me a song I haven't done. So, What is Love? A song by Ed Valley and Eden Castillo, my co ed. Let's see. What is love to a cat? <laughs> what is love to a cat? You leave him alone to lick all his spots. And then when you give him food, he gets you hot. And that's love. Love to, to a, a cat. cat. Oh, yeah. Right. I can only sing that because Dan's allergic to cats. Yes. And my cat tries to come in here and love on him all oh, yeah. the time. Your cat gets me in the driveway, mm -hmm. follows me into the house, yes. looks at me as to why I don't pet him. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. They all yeah. do that. Jack, all Jack do that. loves you. Jack loves Jordan. Jack loves you. It's it's pretty great. Absolutely. So, yes. Uh, and if you're really enjoying the show and you'd like to tip me for all of these songs we're singing tonight, you can tip me at buymeacoffee.com. Or Venmo. And? And please subscribe. 
There. Subscribe. Hit the button. To the, hit the button. <laughs> hit the hit the button. button. <laughs> and please subscribe on my YouTube channel. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, that way you get notification of when we're going live You're again. You're not getting out of it so soon. We got another Sounds Like a Song. Eden. Okay. Karen Besson. Sounds Like a Song. Love. Love is the what? The ladder to my heart. Love is the ladder to my heart. Okay. Love is the ladder to my heart. Everything is about love tonight. Right, yeah. Let's see. I'm feeling a dance beat. Love is a ladder to my heart. You can't climb high enough. It's a ladder to my heart. If you want to make the climb, there's a few things you got to do. Because love is like a ladder to my heart. Love is like a ladder to my heart. And I'm going down the ladder to you. Just like Rapunzel did with her hair. I live in a tower. Nobody goes there. But I'll throw down the ladder to you. Because it's you that I love. Love is like a ladder to my heart. Love is like a ladder to my heart. Better than a bladder to my heart. Because love is like a ladder on a ladder to my heart. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like a song. All right, Robin. Oh, my God. They're all coming now in. Now they're all coming in. Bottom of your class and you're my doctor, lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Robin. Wonder what made you write that. <laughs> Sounds like it. Well, you gave me an exam and you said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I think you're going to die. Pay my fee. You have no bedside manner. You really, really don't have any bedside manner because you're bottom of your class and you're my doctor. Lucky me. Lucky you. Don't go telling people they're going to die because when you tell people they're going to die, you say you're going to die. You're bottom of your class and you're my doctor. Lucky me. And now I have to pay your deduct. Double fee. Mm, nice. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, we could do a whole we show bitching show. about doctors. <laughs> Let me tell you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I ever have to sue any? Uh, I, when, when, when my dad was alive, we absolutely sued doctors, but I don't do that. We send them to, we send them to other mean lawyers who make a living out of doing it, to be honest with you. <laughs> send them to the other mean lawyer because yeah. Dan's the nice pussycat lawyer. No, no. I, I rip them apart right. when it's a divorce, but for the malpractice stuff, it goes to someone who's got absolutely ruthless. I, I try to get them to a point where they can live on and mm -hmm. co-parent with their children and mm -hmm. move to a better place. This is good. And sometimes you got to spank them hard to get mm -hmm. them there, but mm -hmm. Malpractice is win at all costs. They attack everybody. So um, it's just a lot of work. There's the Dan Legal Minute right now. That's my legal That's minute. That's right, right. That's my legal let minute. Let there be law. Yes. Let them... Oh, my Angela. God. They just keep coming yes. and coming. <laughs> all right. I've got one. You rock my fishing world. Okay. Fishing down at the fishing hole, and I saw the fish in the water. I said, Little fishy girl, you sure rock my fishing world. If you were not a fish, you'd be my daughter. <laughs> I didn't say good, I just said we made up songs. We'll make them up. There, right. there is an amazing suggestion, though, from Roger. Look at that. Oh, gosh. Roger. It's a, that, that, that title writes itself, doesn't you it? Don't yoke, you don't yoke Naughty. him. Much I love. <laughs> Naughty. And after we had the bowl and ace last night, the Naughty is perfect. <laughs> they say life is like spaghetti. 
but I think spaghetti's too chalky. I say life is like a different kind of pasta. You don't gnocchi how much I love gnocchi. Yeah. Take your fettuccine and stick it in a pan. Take your red sauce and throw it near a fan. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Ziti lasagna. They don't make me walky because you don't know gnocchi how much I love gnocchi. Yay. You are such a Rhode Islander, Eden. I'm such a Rhode Islander. Yes, besides telling instructions like go by where the Bennies used to be, which is now a job lot, where the job lot used to be is now a heart. You got it all, but mm -hmm. you, you must have listed eight different kinds of pasta in that song. Thank you. From from the Midwest girl who wasn't really sure how bolognese was supposed to I taste. Didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like, you know, I, I, I used to buy a can that had the word ragu on it. That's <laughs> what I did. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Roger says, sorry, there's a story, but this is fabulous. <laughs> right. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. You make me work for it. I appreciate it. I think it. Roger's coming on. <laughs> I think we're going to have Roger on for another show. Yeah, I think he's probably coming on. So get ready, Roger. So, yeah, I hope for all of you who are, who are sitting around playing at home, if you're interested in being a guest on The Eden Show, uh, you can contact me. And uh, I know people. So what you need to be a guest on this show is, uh, yeah, a good sense of humor. And yeah, I want you to sing because it's about singing. You can play an instrument if you want. You can tell I'm going to support you and what you do. And you're going to chat with me and Dan. And then at the end of the hour, you're going to do some improvisation. That's really it. It's really, really fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, before the credits run, which right. is happening pretty like, soon. Yeah, pretty soon. I would like to just say that Roger mm -hmm. is in a show with you and I coming up yes. in the, I think it's I the first weekend it. of it. There. Oh, there, there we go. Auditions are over, folks. Auditions are over. We've got 15 Dance singers. Been cast. Thank yep. you. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. It's directed by the wonderful Karen Besson, who uh, has been putting titles in the song and who appeared as a guest in one of our better shows a couple of weeks ago. Yes, she did. Karen yes. Besson is going to be directing that. Yes, hard, hard, hard. Absolutely. So we're starting rehearsals for that. That will be going up the first full week of November, right? Yes. Yeah. First full weekend of November, uh, where there is no boat, I will put a boat. It's a stories uh, from the past 18 months, but it's told with songs from uh, the cabaret period. Mm. So I'm helping to arrange some of that and to play a little bit of it. An MC, you're going to be performing in it. Yes. Uh, it's going to be Tides a really to turn. Moment. You're MCing. That's right. I get I'm to performing. MC. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to have Roger. to just watch you a little more carefully. So I know <laughs> what I'm doing. So all that's coming up. There's a lot of fun stuff coming up. So if you haven't been vaccinated, go get vaccinated so you can enjoy all this. Please. Yeah, please do. And uh, wear your masks. GAM Theater is about to open up again. CTC is doing stuff outside. There's a lot of wonderful stuff happening. And uh, let's just get as healthy as we can so we can all enjoy it for as much as we can. Quick, quick vaccination fact. In the New York Times had an article today. Uh -huh. And apparently only one out of every 5,000 new cases of COVID is from someone who's been vaccinated wow. and it's mostly mild. So Good. it really does work. The numbers don't lie, folks. Good. Yes. I thought was a little concerned last night when we went to see our friend Ida Zeko and Jim Rice. Oh my God, that place was packed. It so place was, was I. Packed. So yeah. was I. And we Mask sat next to each other. on the way other. to the bathroom <laughs> and we sat right next to each other. Yeah. And it was a little, uh, um, but I also thought, but you do have protection. So you did what you could. You yes. really did. So yes. and of course the waiter with his nose sticking out. From yeah. the <laughs> he was having a tough night, that poor guy. Poor guy. So uh, you're oh, going to wait, the credits, yeah. oh, well, the credits are almost there. Oh. So I just want to make sure I get every promo in I possibly can. Yes, yes. What so else is Piano there? Bar starts on Friday, September 24th at the Pump House. That's where I will be playing with you along with my friends, Joe Potenza and Rick Kudo. So you can come down and sing with a live band uh, starting on Friday, September 24th. And then the other open mics will happen around the time that our other fr singer friends perform. So before Jordan Becker on October 17th, after or before Eliza on Sunday, November 14th, and then Sunday, December 12th is just on a clear. So in 2022, I'll be doing that on a regular uh, mm. Sunday basis. I think every second Sunday. So I'm thrilled to get to do that. So yes, you can come on down, sing for me. Basically, you know, if it really goes well, maybe you get to come on the Eden show. Yes. And come, even if all you do is sing in your car <laughs> or in your shower, Eden will bring out the performer in you. That's it. Yes. I will bring out the performer in you. 
thank you for being my MC and my personal lawyer and a great performer, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight and for indulging in kind of this wonderful infomercial. It was great fun to get to just perform my own stuff for you, especially since I won't get to perform uh, this weekend in New York. But so many other fun performances coming up. Oh, and thank you, Ed Valley, for that suggestion, by the way. Ed and I are performing next weekend at Carriage Inn and Java Madness. If you want to learn about all of this stuff and to see what I'm up to, you can visit EdenCastile.com. Is it right there? Yeah. Ta-da. Yeah. If you visit my website, uh, you're going to learn all about what I do. You can learn how to work with me. You can see examples of what students have done. You can see Dan's video from What Are You Doing, Rosh Hashanah Eve. It's all up there. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. And we hope you all have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time for Tish Adams. Good night.